If you're after that glorious film look that people never seem to shut up about, I have a pretty unique option here that really shook up my workflow and gave me some awesome results. Just to give you a quick idea of what Dehancer is actually capable of, here's a video clip I shot of a beautiful gas station with their CineStill 800T preset. And here's a photo of that same gas station using actual CineStill 800T in my Pentax K1000. Wow! Color me impressed. <laughs> Get it? Color grading? <laughs> yeah. And for all my precious little eggies who are currently saying, hey, I don't really care about video stuff, so I'm gonna click off. Oh, don't do that. There's also a photo editing version of Dehancer, which my friend Run and Gun discussed on his channel, so go watch that after this video. Plus, if you did click off, that would fuck up my watch time, and I know you don't want that. There's so many options out there when it comes to color grading. You got Film Convert, you got Magic Bullet, you got LUTs from your favorite YouTubers, you got my deep fried video tutorial, fucking thing sucks! And now, you got Dehancer. So first off, Dehancer. What do you even do? In their own words, Dehancer offers film-like color grading and film effects with dozens of real photographic and motion picture films with truly analog controls, film grain, bloom, and halation effects to complete the look. Now some of you might be saying halation, bloom. What? What the hell is even that? Well, don't worry, I'm gonna explain it all in this video. But before that full disclosure, the people at Dehancer did give me a trial license for this to test it out and make a video about it. They don't have any input on what I'm saying. These are my thoughts after using Dehancer for like, I don't know, a month and a half, two months. So I guess what I'm saying is, this is not a sponsored video. That one's definitely for the OGs on the channel. <laughs> We're gonna start out with a bird's eye view. Here are the pros and cons of Dehancer. As someone who shoots a lot of film, I really appreciate the amount of customization Dehancer brings to the table. The film selection is so deep, and many of the presets are really accurate in my opinion. It just feels like Dehancer is a plugin that was assembled by a bunch of film geeks which I love. The version I tested is a plugin that lives right in Premiere, so it's very convenient for my workflow. It is also available for DaVinci Resolve and After Effects. There's also a Final Cut Pro version, which is in beta. It has super deep customization, and if you're a film nerd, this is so much more than just applying LUTs to your footage. But it's pretty expensive. Dehancer is very GPU and CPU intensive, so lower end computers might have a heart attack trying to run this software. My computer sounds like a lawnmower at certain points if I'm playing this stuff back on render. And last but not least, if you're not familiar with film terminology, there might be a bit of a steep learning curve with all these different terms like halation and uh, film breath and... <laughs> Granted, if you're interested in buying a software like this, you're probably already about that life. We need to address the price of Dehancer right out of the gate because it might be prohibitive to some people. It's 400 bucks for the Premiere and After Effects plugin that they let me test out. Now that does include the color profiles, the grain, the halation, the bloom, the whole carton of eggs. And it is lifetime updates. It's not like a monthly service thing like my big beautiful friends that adore me. <laughs> Two big things to keep in mind when it comes to the pricing. First of all, you can buy the effects piecemeal, so you can buy just the grain, just the halation, just the looks, whatever you want. But I do think everything works well together, so you might not want to go just the piecemeal option. And second, these licenses all exist separately. So if you want to use Dehancer in Premiere and After Effects, that's a license. If you want to use it in Resolve, that's a different license. If you want to use it for Lightroom and Photoshop, that is another license. The photo editing versions of Dehancer are $200 as a post the 400 for the video though. But 400 bucks is quite a few rolls of Cine Still 800T. Do I personally think it's worth the money? Yes, but it might not be for everyone. Let me explain my use case. As many of you probably figured out since you're watching this video, I create web-based media for YouTube. I tend to upload regularly. Okay, most of the time I upload regularly, but it's a pretty fast-paced workflow. On the other hand, I also work on short films, music videos, and weddings. Those projects tend to be much more slow and methodical on the post-production end of things. Dehancer fits well into both of these workflows. On the one hand, you can do a quick and dirty color grade, and on the other, you can get extremely particular in customizing virtually every aspect of the film emulation down to the amount of halation and bloom. Alright, let's hop over to my beautiful little table with a bunch of my crap on it so we can run through all the features Dehancer has to offer. By going through them one by one like this, you can see how all of the different parts of the plugin work together to build the look. First up, you gotta add the Dehancer effect to your clip. Then you gotta tell Dehancer what kind of footage you're working with. 
I'll choose my camera from their list, but I'll have to go with the Fuji X-T3 since the Fuji X-T4 isn't on the list yet. I assume it's coming soon, TM, but honestly, the F-Log from the X-T3 has done just fine for my purposes. You've been seeing this setting in the last, like, three or four videos on the channel, actually. I love how they have the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera Profiles down to the specific dual base ISOs the cameras have. That's really cool. Beyond that, you have some basic correction settings like exposure compensation and color temperature. Then you get to the fun stuff, the film tab. Here you can select the film stock you want to emulate from a plethora of choices, from the basics like Kodak Gold, Cine Still 800T, Vision 3 250D, to the more exotic like Loma Chrome Purple. And Loma Purple is a bag of ass. Wrong! There are honestly so many choices here, so we'll quickly run through a few of my favorites. They also give you the ability to push and pull your film emulation here, which is a really awesome feature. Under the expand section, you can play around with the video's black and white points. Then you have the print section, which my friend Jacob went in depth in his review of Dehancer, so I'm going to link that below so you can check that out because he definitely knows more about it than I do. I went with his recommendation, which is the Kodak 2383, and I just find that it gives a little bit more contrast, a little bit more pop. I know there's a like buzzwords, but looks good. I like it. You have the color head section, which is somewhat similar to the HSL sliders in Lightroom, meaning you can selectively alter your colors with this tool. Then we have my favorite, Film Grain. Dehancer created, in their words, a mathematic 3D model that allows them to generate flexibly controlled analog light procedural grain. Every grain procedural but it really does give a beautiful, unique look to your footage. And what I love is that it's not just an overlay. Up next, we have sections for halation and bloom, which are two very fun parts of the film aesthetic. Halation creates that subtle red glow around the bright light sources, specular highlights and contrasting edges, and bloom creates that almost haziness to the image. So if that explanation was a little too geeky and technical for you, check out my succulent plant. Keep your eye on the highlights. Once the halations kick in, they turn this like reddish orangey color, which is a uh, really nice kind of cine still looking, you know, I mean, obviously, a lot of films do that that has to do with the remjet but let's keep it simple for right now and once i kick in the bloom you'll notice kind of just an overall haziness there's more diffusion it's almost like a little bit of a glow it's just a very nice look and a very nice addition that pulls things all together i will also note here that a little goes a long way these can look very excessive very quickly so i suggest using them in moderation i do have the settings turned up pretty significantly right now just so that you can see what they look like the halation and bloom tools also have a mask mode so you can see specifically what parts of the image you're targeting with them, which is really helpful. You have a vignette section, which is a lot of fun to play around with. There's also a section for film breath, which in their words is an accidental change in exposure, contrast, and color from frame to frame as the film moves. And gate weave, which is the mechanical swinging of the film strip while it's being pulled through a frame window in a film camera, projector, or video coding device. As you can see, there's a ton of customization here. It's almost overwhelming. And here's a fun fact, you can enable keyframes on any one of these parameters to animate them. And before we move on, one last thing that I thought might be relevant was doing a comparison for those of you who may not have a camera that can shoot in a flat picture profile. So here's some Rec. 709 footage from my Fujifilm X-T4. All of my Dehancer settings are exactly the same, the only difference here is that instead of setting my camera, I just set it to Rec. 709, and there you go. I was pretty impressed with how similar they look. Honestly, I think the Rec. 709 does need a little bit more tweaking, but all in all, it's still a viable option. Here are some things I think the team at Dehancer need to focus on. First and foremost is the optimization of the plugin. Not everyone is rocking an RTX 3080 in their computer. The team really needs to figure out a way to make the program less intensive if they want mass appeal. When Adobe added GPU acceleration to Premiere, it was a game changer for a lot of editors who were on more modest systems. So hopefully Dehancer can do something similar to make the program more efficient and more accessible. One thing I found a little bit annoying about Dehancer was the enable button. So let's say you jump into the grain and you start messing around with all the settings. You'll notice that nothing changes on your video footage. Dude, why isn't this working? Ah! Until you hit the enable button, that is. It would be really cool if once you start messing with any of those parameters, the enable button automatically flags so that in real time you can see the changes happening to your video. It would be awesome if we can customize and make a favorites menu. If you know you only modify a few specific parameters, it would be so nice to just have a handy list of those rather than having to expand and go through every single choice. When you have every section of this plugin expanded, it is wild. It feels like it goes on longer than the last wave at the Hold on Nightmare Horde mode. Ugh, so relatable. 
He is back with the Doom references. It's been a while. Sorry about that. Don't get me wrong. I love the customization and how deep everything goes, but this would be a matter of convenience. And everybody knows those little quality of life change updates are often the most appreciated by users. Every now and then I've encountered artifacting and weird screen tearing when using Dehancer, especially when I'm pushing it and kind of messing with a lot of the effects at once. But I've also noticed that if you render the clip, that usually cleans up the issue. I did have to restart Premiere once, but I'm chalking that up to a compatibility thing with either my version of Premiere or my graphics card. One final thing I'll encourage you to consider is something that I've mentioned on the channel a bunch in the past, but it's the destination of your media. If you're creating media for social platforms like YouTube or TikTok, this might be more than you actually need. If you're not uploading huge chonker files, YouTube compression is probably going to mush up all the beautiful grain that Dehancer would create. So that's something to keep in mind. But the bottom line is this, only you can figure out if the price is right. I really dig the plugin. It fits right into my workflow and I can see myself getting a ton of use out of it. You can download a free trial of Dehancer, but it does give you this really classy watermark across your entire screen, but you can still get a feel for the program and see if you like it. Let me know in the comments below if you're going to check out Dehancer, if you already use it, any fun tips, anything that you found with it, and uh, join the Discord, find me on Instagram, you know what to do. Share this video, I haven't made that joke in a while either. Alright, see you in the next one, bye. Like and subscribe. Sweet Lou Photography. Dumb man.